<laughs> we have all the hose. What doesn't mean that it works? We need to take to the boat and check in place. That's scary, it's tricky. Seems like an easy thing to do, but no. really, really tricky to get it perfect. And diesel tank needs to be perfect because we don't want yeah. diesel leaking on the tank, right? If this works, we have a bunch more to do. I'm Roberta. And I'm Luca. And for the past year, we have been building our own tiny shipping container house, so we can travel around knowing that we will always have this little place that we can call home. But guess what? We just found our dream project before we expected, this abandoned sailboat. So we are going to stop building the house for a couple months to bring our boat back to life. And then we're going to go back and finish the house. First one of so many. <laughs> the first one is always the trickiest one. Yeah. All the gas get cut, I mean the first step. That's actually the easiest step was to do what we just did. <laughs> because in order to have the whole gasket around, we need to do this. That's gonna be tricky. <laughs> Let me explain what we mean by that. The way we are gonna connect, for example, this gasket to this gasket, if we just do like this, it's gonna have a leak right here. So instead, we need to cut like this, like, don't, I don't know how to call that, like a puzzle. So we need to create this to make sure we don't have a leak. Of course, it would be much better to have the entire gasket in one piece, but that would cost too much money because yeah. this gasket is pretty expensive, the <laughs> rubber is really expensive. So in order to save material, we decide to do this way. And as it was like that for 28 years, I think, almost 29 years, I think that's gonna last for a long time. <laughs> But it's tricky to do, you need to be like artists to be able to do this exact shape and you know, because this is gonna fit inside of this. And then we are gonna use this. Oh, that's true. We are gonna glue the connection with this glue that is silicone based and it's made for engines. That means you can glue anything that touches the diesel. They say. <laughs> they say it's not gonna corrode the diesel. The, I mean, the diesel is not corrode this. Fingers crossed, we believe. Actually, uh, the former owner of the boat, when he sold the boat to us, he said that if we have any question, anything we need to find out how to do it, and someone that is really smart and that works with boats for a long time, he has a friend that helped him back many years ago and that he lives in the same town still. He showed up one day in the marina and we met him like maybe a month ago. Yeah. And so it was really cool. We had a really nice chat with him and he gave us this tip to do that. Because at first I thought I was gonna use Sikaflex, but he said Sikaflex, the diesel will corrode with time, will get loose, and he said that this is enough to seal the tank, but the joints, he said we should use this glue. We trust him and we're gonna use this glue. That's what happens. Hope it works. Hope it works. <laughs> So now the scariest moment so far. Yeah, we need to do the whole. We are gonna the strategy is gonna be to mark the tip one, do the hole, and then locate the hole, mark the other tip, do the hole. Because 
the most important holes are these two, this and this. If they are right, they're gonna compress these two pieces together. If they're wrong, they're gonna just pull this apart. Mm. So that means this is the trick. All the corners are the trick points. On the middle, I think the pressure is gonna yeah. put it back on in place, but this is the trick. So let's try to do, yeah, you can do a time lapse, right? Yeah. Because it's just too much work. We have all the holes. What well, doesn't mean that it works? You need to take to the boat and check in place. But that's scary, it's tricky. Seems like an easy thing to do, but no. really, really tricky to get it perfect. And diesel tank needs to be perfect because we don't want yeah. diesel leaking on the tank, right? If this works, we have a bunch more to do. <laughs> Let's try this in place. Yep. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Long time we don't see you. <laughs> so now let's try to figure out which one is this lead. Which one you think it is? This one. I believe this is the one. <laughs> it's not bad. Look at that. Check it out. No, it fits. That's a little bit loose, but we once we glue, glue yeah. it's gonna be fine. But now, I think you can hold this and I'll try to fit this in place. That's just a dry fit, by the way, because we are gonna do all at once. When we finish, we are just trying this one to make sure we did the holes right and we can keep it doing this way. Uh -oh. yeah, the problem is, when we send this to send blast, we lost the marks. Uh, if we don't find the right position we need to ask him because he said there is some marks here but I didn't find the marks but if we don't find we're gonna call him I think it might be this one job babe we did a lot better than I would ever imagine <laughs> yeah now we what we need to do is to glue these corners just to make sure water won't go through this way mm -hmm. and then oil it's, yeah oil not water yeah this is this <laughs> yeah and then we need to screw in place we have another great news what's the great news there is no rust inside That's after amazing. three weeks yeah this has been closed for Three weeks already. No rust at all. No rust. That means this is gonna last for a long time now. But we need to go out to start creating the rest of the hose. Because I'm sweaty. And we either open all the hatches or we get out of here. Oh, mm, it's beautiful. In order to close the diesel tank, we need to have all the holes connected to the tank otherwise because we're gonna f after we close we're gonna fill up the tank really really fill that means even the holes might have some diesel in it that means that we cannot exchange holes right after we fill the tank that means we need to exchange the holes that we want before we fill the tank and now we need to find out the how long is these holes and these holes I'm pretty sure one of those Diesel, I think it's for the diesel engine, for the main engine, the the hose that take the diesel out of the tank. I think this one is the one for the pump. Uh, we showed you in a past episode a pump that we can get a sample from the diesel just to see how the diesel it is. And I'm not sure, but I think this is for the diesel generator. You can, you can tell it's really good, really good condition. Check this out. 
Yeah, so we need to oh, make sure we know which hose is this one, if it's for the diesel generator. If it is, we're going to just put just a, a, a lead, a tip. Yeah, we're going to close the hole because we're not going to use the diesel generator for now, so we're just going to close. But we need to make sure we know this is the right one. So now, what we're going to do, we're going to use this string to measure how long is, because it's easier than a measuring tape. But first I'm gonna find out where so I don't know if you can see but there is a just a bottle here. This is a pump that pumps a sample of diesel from the bottle of the tank. As we have a diesel tank that's too big, sometimes it's good to know if it's dirt the bottom because all the dirt will go to the bottom. So this gets a sample from the bottom of the tank and now we need to follow this hose that comes to this pump right there. We follow this one. None. Yes, this one. one. So that's the one from the other one is this one, right? Isn't this one? Which one? This one is this one that's closed on the tip. So that's the diesel coming in the bowl. We finally found out. All the holes. <laughs> we just need to measure now. So now we have all the sample we need. There is only one last thing we didn't do. That's probably the trickiest one. Oh, sorry for that. Yeah, we need to check the hose clean. to clean the hose that is where you put the diesel on the deck that goes from the deck to the tank. We should it's have done this before. Yeah, our bad. Yeah, we should have done this before, but yeah, I mean, we didn't do it. We need to do it now. So it's a big one, really, really big one that we believe it's in a good shape. We are not going to exchange because it's going to be a mess to exchange. That mm. one is behind the furniture and behind the walls. Just it's almost bound on the hook. Yeah, it's almost. <laughs> it's, it would be really, really tricky to exchange right now. So what we're going to do, we're going to clean inside and then we just need to clean that inside. We need to buy these ones, install these ones. And I'm pretty sure we are ready to close the diesel tank and fill up with diesel. It's going to be really cool. I'm <laughs> excited for that. One hose of the engine exchange. That's the first one. <laughs> it's an important one. It's the first hose we exchange on the engine. We still have a few to go, but it's all good. Now we have these two ones that we want to exchange, and these we can cut the right length now. No, we can leave it there, and we can cut in the future. No, but we need one of them. We need to use.
At first the idea was to clean the holes that goes from the deck to the diesel tank. But, but things <laughs> changed really quick. Yeah. As you guys know, we've been sitting on the apartment, we are not on the boat right now, for over a week now. Yeah. Yeah. You, you might be confused because you watched last week an episode that we said that we've been on the apartment for two weeks. <laughs> That's because we are recording this today. But the episode that we're gonna, the episode that you watched last week, the live episode was recorded next week. Just to make it clear, we've been, we needed to stay in the apartment for at least two weeks, you guys know, because of the situation of the world, the marina is, was shut down. Yeah. And that means that we could not close the diesel tank. But more than that... Now we have a dilemma. <laughs> yeah, we, we realized that it was not the right thing to close the diesel tank right now. Why yeah. that? There are some holes of the, the diesel tank that goes from the diesel tank to the engines and they are crossing the water tank. Yeah, the, I, they pass right on the top of the leads, the main leads of the water tank. That means it would be a lot harder to close the water tank after we have the hose in place and we would not be able to take this hose off in order to close the water tank. Yeah. And more than that, we don't want to have any diesel leak inside of the water tank because if we try out the tank and somehow the hose that goes to the engine leaks, we're gonna mix diesel on the water tank and that's not good at all. Oh, before you ask, no, they're not connected. Because we told someone that and they said like, so don't you want to try leaks inside of the tank before you fill up with diesel and you get diesel on the water tank? There is no connection in between the diesel tank and the water tank. There is a bilge in between them. Yeah, the huge, you know, the big bilge is right in between uh, both of them. So that means the tank cannot leak to the other tank. That's not the problem. But the hose that goes from the tank, the diesel line in the return diesel line for the engine pass right on the top of the water tank. So you rather have the water tank close it and then we can try the line and see if there is leak, right? But if we close the water tank, we need to use the water instead of just leaving the water there yeah, we don't want to leave like three months of water sitting, like 700 liters of water sitting on the tank. To do this, we would need to have batteries and to have the pump for the water to use the water. And for that, we would need to close the diesel tank. Yeah, I don't know if you remember, but in order to have energy back to the boat, we need to close the diesel tank because the battery is right on the top of the diesel tank. That means we need to close the diesel tank in order to have battery, in order to have a pump, and in order to use the water. So that means it's like a tricky situation but we have a plan. a plan for that. Yeah. Instead of closing the whole diesel tank, what are we gonna do? We are gonna close just one lid that goes on the bottom of the, the batteries. So we are gonna close just one of out of eight. Yes. Seven, we, are, we have seven. like we have eight diesel eight. leads. So we are gonna close just one, and then we are gonna install the batteries, and then we are gonna change all the hoses of the water. Yeah, that's another thing because yeah. in order to fill up the water tank, we need to have all the connections, all the holes connect to the main lead. And in order to do that, we need to have the pump stored in place because the way we take water from the tank is through a pressure pump. So we need to have this pump in place. We already bought the pumps. We didn't install in place and we didn't exchange the hose. We started doing it right before we needed to leave the marina. We bought all the hose, we bought the pump, the but pump. Yeah, but we had no time to do it. So we next step, so what's the next step? We are excited to get back to the marina and start this project. Yeah, what's ah, the next step? The next step is gonna be to change the hose. Yeah, once we go back to the boatyard, we are gonna start exchanging, they say replacing, yeah, replacing the hose and the valves. We're gonna replace 100% of the water valves of the boat for new valves and good valves that we still ordered. planning that because some people say that it's easier to to leave the hose there and change one by one but we are gonna um, yeah. have some changing you know when someone gives you an advice everyone gives you the same advice same. that means the advice must be good because everyone say the same thing you do not take off the old hose before you connect one by one the new one so you can have them as a guide like you, you can get the new hose through the spot with the old one. The thing is, we have a lot of hose on the boat that are not actually being used. We have more hose than we need. That means it's gonna be a lot easier to pass through the new ones because we are gonna have less hose than we used to have. And somehow we feel like taking them off and putting them back like one by one after that. But it's against what everyone says and that's like, it's hard to go against so many people that said exactly the same thing. Don't do it, you're gonna regret. But we sometimes feel like doing it. 
and we are gonna have uh, an uh, sorry this is gonna be a long video as as usual but we so, we have time we have like a week we can, to sit here we can share with you now before we do actually because usually we share with you after, after we, we have do, done already yeah so we can give you us some advice you can give us some advice yeah and we didn't install the toilets yet because there are some holes on the bottom of the toilet yeah but i think the toilets we're gonna for now just install the connection like all the all the holes and leave the holes there because we bought brand new toilets. We have two new toilets that we don't want to leave there while we are working on things that we can ruin the toilet, like, you know, like step on the toilet or let paint fall on the toilet. We're gonna leave for a little bit later. The idea is now to, we used to have two pumps for the water, but for the uh, the fresh water, but now we are planning on have salt water inside the boat as well. So we are planning on have one salt water pump. Yeah, pump. Well, we yeah. used to have two, uh, fresh water pumps because there were two small fresh water pumps one mainly I think for showers and for sink and another one for sinks Some, I, I don't remember exactly where you we use each one but now we bought a bigger or fresh, fresh water, water a bigger pump and we used to have no salt, salt water on the boat the only salt water on the boat was a foot pump no. on the kitchen yeah no. it was a foot pump it was Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we had a food pump on the kitchen for salt water. It doesn't make sense in our way of seeing yeah. to have a food pump with salt water. I mean, if you had both salt water and fresh water on the pump, we are okay with it. But we, if you need to choose one, you just choose. Yeah, we don't have space for having two, so yeah. for fit ones. Yeah, and it makes sense to have a food pump for fresh water because if you have the outlet for fresh water, you just you use a lot of water, and if you have a you know, a food pump for fresh water, you're gonna use a little fresh water. So we decide to have on the kitchen, we're gonna have salt water on the outlet and food pump for the fresh water. So that means you wash with the salt water, with a lot of salt water, and then you just, uh, how you call it? Rinse. rinse. You just rinse with the food pump. That's the idea? Yeah. And also uh, what else we need with the salt water pump? Not just that. To wash the anchor and... Yeah, we want to, that's a, a project that we didn't, actually find a solution for it we have half of the solution we want to bring the salt water line to the uh, stern of the boat and create a hole on the on the hole some sort of way of bringing the the holes outside and from there we want to have a shower uh, a salt water shower on the stern and one on the bow of the boat to clean to wash up the chain of the anchor we have already, you know, the rail to put the hose inside of the railing and take to the bow of the boat, but we didn't find a way of crossing the hull of the boat, but that's the future. One problem at a yeah. time. So for, for these changes, we are going to need to change the, the position of some hose. Yeah, that's why some of the hose we are taking off instead of uh, replacing. replacing, because it's not going to have a hose where it was. Yeah. And we need to find a different path for the vent vent holes for the water tank, is it's still it's a pro still planning, yeah. yeah it's like a project on the development. We're still <laughs> planning, and we have these two weeks to think about that. Yeah. We have a lot of time to think about it. Yeah. In order than that, I think the we are then ready to close the water tank, and we decide not to close the diesel tank right now because. We don't it's, know we where. Don't, when we don't know how happens. long it's gonna sit there the diesel. Yeah. We don't want to buy 650 liters of diesel to sit there for three months, yeah. just getting old. So that means we are gonna close the floor and leave the lids open because if we close, we might create condensation inside. And in this way, we can leave for two months or so the diesel tank open. And before we close, we can inspect and see if any rust came back. I we don't believe any rust will come back but at least we can have a less look of the tank before we close and we fill up with diesel because once we close we need to fill up with diesel all the way to the top right away that's the plan but that's gonna be maybe two months from now i guess or three months we don't know now how brazil is gonna be when all the situation yeah the there. truth is we don't really know what's gonna be not just brazil the whole world yeah. how it's gonna be in a month from now yeah. Uh, we still have some jobs that are easy to do as soon as we go to the marina that we don't need to buy anything else. We have all the material, we, we can do it and that would be to exchange the hose and that would be to finish the mast. Yeah. 
Maybe next week you're gonna see an episode about the mess. We are not sure yet. We are right now up to date. We are halfway, maybe 60% ready to install the mess because we get the mess ready on the ground and then we step the mess up on the deck. Right now we already install all the clutches, we install all the winches, we install all the mess steps. We still need to install the radar uh, support for the antenna. We still need to install the navigation light. We still need to install the wind decks, the wind vane for the wind sensor, the wind sensor for the electronics, the halyards. the halyards, and I think that's it, right? We have already all the halyards. We, we have everything we need. The only thing we don't have yet is it's the super. radar support yeah. and the navigation lights and the spreader lights for the the deck lights. We already bought, they didn't arrive yet. So that means we have no idea if they're gonna arrive or not, but that doesn't mean we cannot stall the mess without them, we can do it. But I think that's it for today. We've yeah. been rambling for a long time. <laughs> we just need to welcome on board our new patrons. Yeah, that's <laughs> So welcome on board Dean, Steve, Sean, Tim, Greg, Shava, Todd, almost odd, that's pretty good. <laughs> Made tricks, Amadeu, Vincent. And we also want to thank a Brazilian supporter. <laughs> now we need to speak a little bit of Portuguese. Nando, muito obrigado. Bem-vindo. Bem-vindo a bordo. And I guess that's it for today, right? Yeah. Yeah. We have another week of rest. I mean, yeah. like we need to edit this video now. <laughs> yeah. See you guys next week. See you. See you next week. <laughs>